What's up guys, MC Stu here, and today we're gonna talk about personal space traits. We're going to look at them from the standpoint of which ones have the most overall uh, utility across all the different types of builds. Um, I may do some follow-up videos for specific uh, personal space traits for particular builds like torpedo, science, things like that. The traits that I'm going to go over today, though, are traits that I would use on all of those builds as well. Um, so these are going to kind of be the core of the of the personal space traits that, that I use on pretty much any type of build. And then the other half of them will vary depending on, um, you know, what kind of build that is. Like I said, if it's science, we're going to have some more traits that are going to be focused in, in that, that area. Same with, you know, tanking and things like that. Um, but these traits will be usable across the board on pretty much all of your builds and should be the first ones that you're targeting to, to pick up for, uh, uh, for your ships here. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. All right, so if you're new to Star Trek Online, personal space traits um, are kind of a watered down starship trait, if you will. Um, you have a lot more of those slots. So if you open your character screen and we go to traits, you'll have your ground um, traits, personal traits. You'll have your space traits. You'll have your starship traits. You'll have your reputation space traits, your reputation ground traits. It's uh, it's very complicated or convoluted. There's a lot of layers to it. And so today in this video, we're going to be focusing on the personal space traits. Um, all of these ones that I'm going to go over are going to come off of the exchange or from lock boxes or the, the multi-choice boxes that'll drop for legacy ones. Um, I generally will grind out EC, um, tour the galaxy, different things like that, um, and save up, pick it up, and then apply it. These traits are only unlocked for this one character. So if you buy it on the exchange and you open that box, it's going to apply to your current character. It will not apply across your account. Most of your starship traits will. When you unlock the ship, you'll get the trait and then you can get the ship again on another character, unlock it and claim it again. Personal space traits, um, that, that is not the case. So most of the top ones here are all stock traits. Um, I will have some honorable mentions as well that are things that you could fill in. So if maybe, you know, you're missing a couple on this list, but you have a couple other ones, you could use those until you pick up the rest. Um, but really, we're going to be focusing on the five on the bottom here because all five of these, with the exception of one, really, um, is is going to have just the greatest amount of utility available. And again, there are some, some honorable mentions that will... Uh, Really probably should be in the category, but I didn't want to start messing up this build because I will be doing a build video on uh, on the Lexington here for Fire at Will uh, here in the next couple days. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So this isn't necessarily in any kind of priority order. Um, this is just kind of how I have them laid out in here. So the first one is going to be Terran Targeting. And what this does is it gives you a straight plus 15% critical severity, which is a very large boost. There's not many consoles in the game that'll give you more than that. In fact, off the top of my head, I can only think of one. Um, there are some sets you can get that'll build up a good amount like that. But for a personal space trait slot, which you have a good amount of them, um, being able to get a 15% critical severity boost just flat is, is very, very good. And there's not a build out there where that's not a good thing for you, be it science, torpedo, tanking, any of the energy weapon builds. More crit severity is important. Crit chance, on the other hand, you can kind of top that out, um, especially with all the different ways that you can proc things in order to build it up. And, you know, if you're running anywhere close to 90 or 100%, which is a lot, you know, fully maxed out, but um, you, you can't get any more out of it. And so anytime you get a critical hit, what's going to matter is the severity involved. So if you're building, you know, and you're getting up to, you know, around 40, 50, 60, um, you don't need to go too much farther than that, depending on the kinds of traits and things that you have. If they start to stack that kind of thing up, um, having that critical severity is really important. So the Terran targeting systems is, is an S tier uh, in terms of personal space traits because it gives you just an excellent boost and you can use it on basically every single build in the game. No reason not to have more critical severity. Uh, this comes from, uh, from the lock boxes or the exchange. Um, I'm not going to quote the prices because those change all the time. I think I picked mine up for, I want to say, 20 million. Um, they might be more or less than that right now. It depends on what the supply is. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, next, we have a good day to die. This would be S tier 
except for it is only usable on tactical characters. Um, so what it does is when you click um, or so go down fighting, let's just start there, which is this here. This is a tactical captain's ability. So it's innate to being a tactical captain. Normally what it would do is if you drop under 50% hull, um, you can click this button and what it'll do is give you a nice boost to your resistance rating and it will give you a 50% bonus all damage, uh, which is huge. That's a huge, huge cat two bonus for 15 seconds. When you slot a good day to die, what it does is it removes that hit points barrier to being able to use it. So if I didn't have this slotted right now, and I'll just take it out to show you, got rid of that, I can no longer click this because my hull is not low enough. Um, so your hull has to be low enough in order for this to activate normally. With good day to die activated or with it slotted, you can now use this anytime that you want to. So for tactical officers, this trait is is a must have if you're an engineer or science character you can't utilize this because you have different uh, personal space or per, um, captain's abilities that are innate to those particular classes um, so it's s tier for tactical officers but uh, it kind of breaks the rules of utility if you will um, because you cannot use it on the other two classes but if you are a tactical character this is going to be usable on all builds that you do, be it science, tanking, torpedoes, whatever kind of build. And just to kind of recap, and I cover this in some other uh, videos when we're talking about class, your class makes very little difference on the kinds of builds that you can do. And right now, tactical is, is the strongest in the game because of the, the captain's abilities. The captain's abilities give you very large damage boosts, and it affects all types of damage. So I can... on. You know, if I put a science build on this, it's going to do as good, if not maybe a little bit better than than a science captain. Now, somebody that's you know really good and have built well, it's not that science captains are, are not good because those are probably the second best in the game. And you can still build those to be very, very good on a science build. Um, there's things obviously that synergize a little bit better, especially when we start looking at control and um, you know science readiness, things like that, that do lend themselves to it. But for you know, just straight damage output, um, the tactical class is is a lot easier to just build towards. And so Good Day to Die is in this list because it will cover all types of builds provided you are on a tactical captain. So that's the only limitation here. Uh, great trait. It's probably one of the first ones I, I go for if I'm starting a new character and I'm wanting to build them up is, is probably these two are, are going to be my first. And it's probably going to be a Good Day to Die and then Terran Targeting. All right, next we have unconventional systems. And what unconventional systems does when this is slotted using a control bridge officer ability gives a negative 7% uh, recharge uh, reduction to your universal consoles. Um, this is, I'm trying to think if, if I need to caveat it. I mean, a lot of us are using some sort of universal console. Um, at, at least at some point you will start to as you accumulate it. If you're, if you're newer, you may not right away, but if you have things like DPRM, Domino, uh, especially on science builds, science builds are universal console heavy, um, this is definitely a must have trait. So if I were to use a universal console, for instance, like um, on this build, I only have one universal console um, that it has a, a clicky, um, something that I can activate off that console. I get the question all the time, what's a clicky? So console that also has an activatable um, I only have one of those on this build and I'm still using it. Um, so if I were to use it, it's got a two minute cooldown. Now I also have one, two and three control abilities. So I can get this console back up in under a minute if I'm in a position where I can continue to use these and use them you know, in the right order. So if you have like the DPRM, you would use that. It has a runtime though, the DPRM does, um, where it actually gives you a countdown. This one does not. You click it, it goes into effect for 15 seconds. I can immediately start trying to refresh it. So it goes on cooldown as soon as you activate it. The DPRM goes on cooldown after the, the ability 
runs its course, then it goes on cooldown. So on something like that, you would want to make sure, okay, is the ability over, the counter's going, and then you would start to activate these. So with even just three of these, and these aren't even the best ways to go about, you know, using control abilities. Pilot has some good ones. Um, Intel has some some decent ones. Um, there, there's quite a few abilities in the game that are going to give you control that you can sneak on to even a more, you know, tactical or, you know, uh, energy weapon kind of build where you can easily be proccing this and get your universal consoles up. So imagine if you want to build like this, and this is more, and I'll just show you it. It's a little bit more of a budget build here. Um, but I did have on it DPRM, Domino. Uh, I had one other one. I can't remember what it is and the M6 computer. So at the beginning of, of a match or when I'm going into combat, I activate all of those. This ship, you know, with all of those universal consoles running just kills everything, right? Um, and normally you'd have to wait then two minutes after that to use it again. Well, if you have unconventional systems and you have a couple control abilities, you can use those control abilities on, on enemies, which are also useful. Um, and then it'll cool down all of those consoles so they're ready to use again much, much faster. And um, if you have even more or better control abilities, control abilities with shorter cooldowns and things like that um, are, are going to obviously be better. And you can just hit the wiki and just type in, um, you know, bridge officer control abilities. We give you a whole list of them. You can see what fits on your ship. Um, but that's going to keep these these universal consoles available to use much more of the time. And that's going to be important again on any type of build because most builds, as you start to kind of build up, you know, your inventory of stuff and put things together, universal consoles that have an activatable are going to become larger parts of, of the builds that you have. So S tier all the way for unconventional systems. Next, we have intelligence attache our is that what it is? In, in, intelligence agent attache. <laughs> Skipped a word there. Um, what this does is on any outgoing critical hit, you're going to get a 2% reduction of the recharge of your captain's abilities. So you'll notice I have, like we discussed a moment ago, go down fighting on my bar. And I normally wouldn't put something down here that has a two minute cooldown because at that kind of length of time, or I'm sorry, a minute cooldown, at that length of time, I'm going to want to be able to decide when it is I want to use that. I don't want this going off when I'm, you know, just clearing some ads. I want to be able to use it when I'm going up against a boss. I have it, though, on this bar because anytime I get a critical hit, the cooldown time on that captain ability and all the other ones is going to be reduced by that 2%. And so if you're running at 30 or 40% critical severity, even at 20% critical severity, I mean, you're going to be cutting the times of, of these refreshes in half by having intelligence attache. Now, if you're down in the, you know, 5% and stuff, then you may not get a real big benefit. But, you know, if you've been able to build up to, you know, the 40s and 50s, you're, you're going to have an uptime on some of these captain's abilities that are even faster than just some of your bridge officer abilities. And again, utility, right? This is important for any kind of build that you do. If this was a science build, I want go down fighting to be up. If it was, you know, uh, a science build on a science character, I'm going to want those science captain's abilities to be available to me as much as possible on an engineer. I don't want to keep pooping on them. There's not a lot there, but there's some stuff that helps a bit, right? So this continually refreshes as long as you're in combat and, and making critical hits those abilities so that you can use them more and more often. The name of the game is put as much damage out as you can with the abilities you have and have as much uptime on your abilities, right? So once you have the basics down, you have matching energy type, you have your weapons power maxed out, um, and we're talking energy build here. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to focus on all of your abilities, your bridge officers, your captain's abilities, your consoles, anything that you can click here, we want that available to us as much as possible. And intelligence attache, along with unconventional systems, are the, one of the two best ways to do that outside of your bridge officer abilities. So these cover your universal consoles and your captain's abilities. S tier, all the way around, you can use it on everything. All right, next is the Boinler effect. So this uh, is a Lobie item. This comes from the Lobie store. I believe it's 200 Lobie. Unless there's a sale, then you can get it cheaper than that. Um, this is a bridge officer cooldown reduction method, basically. Um, it's not a must have, but it is really nice. It frees up a lot of, of stuff on your ship. And in some instances, it, it really just kind of fills the gap. So if I didn't have this, 
I would still be running my Photonic Officer, which is the main cooldown that I have uh, for the ship, but there is some downtime on that. Um, and really what it is is that Boiler Effect isn't 100% keep everything at its maximum cooldown. So really, Boiler is being supplemented by having Photonic Officer. So let's look at what Boiler does. So you get a 17.5% chance uh, to recover the recharge time of all bridge officer abilities up to their shared cooldown. So shared cooldown would be if I had another copy of Fire at Will, or let's say I had another beam um, firing mode like uh, what beam overload. If I were to click this beam overload would also go on cooldown to, I believe it's like 15 seconds, 10 or 15 seconds. Um, these also have a maximum cooldown reduction, whatever the bridge officer ability is of 50%. So you cannot make something recharge any faster than 50%. You can extend the time, the duration, the ability is running for with different methods, depending on your build, but you cannot actually cool down the ability more than that 50%. So what it's saying is that it's not going to go any farther than those hard caps, either the shared cooldown or the hard cap on just the base cooldown of the ability. So anytime I activate a bridge officer ability, I have a 17.5% chance that it's going to reduce the cooldown on any of the, or all the other abilities. So let me find an ability that doesn't have a ton of stuff procking off it. So if we look at this bridge officer at the uh, um, here at the bottom, let me find a uh, one that'll give it to me here. So photonic officer, 17% chance to recover. So you see on the tool tip, it'll add it in to all the things that are affected by, which is basically all of the bridge officer abilities that we have. So, but because it's at 17%, now I have enough, I think, abilities on here to where we'd be okay, but if we had a bad, you know, little run for a few moments where it didn't proc a couple times, then you're gonna find that some things are on cooldown and that's where I'm running Photonic Officer to kind of make up for that. So maybe this, this is more of, what's under S tier, guys, A tier? I should have uh, I should have looked into that. I know S is the best, right? That's for super duper. Anyways, um, this is probably a tier under that, but it, it's a nice one to have. It is expensive though, out of the Lobby store. So this is something that you could chase next to last, I think, out of this list and probably the honorable mentions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the honorable mentions. What do we have here? Adaptive offense. So we're going to gain 2.7 critical chance on critical strikes. Uh, 0.9 critical chance uh, becomes 3% critical severity for 10 seconds with a maximum of 9% critical severity. So basically any time that you're making critical hits, you're going to get a little bit of a stack of critical severity up to a maximum of 9%. It's not a huge boost. And depending if you have a lot of, you know, quote unquote S tier traits, number one, this video is probably, you know, under, you know, it's not something that you really need, but if you don't, this is one that's not super expensive on the exchange and it's a nice little boost if you're trying to just put push that, that crit chance over. It does have to build up a little bit, but that'll happen pretty quick, especially if you're at 30 plus on your critical chance. So between, you know, adaptive offense and Terran targeting, you know, that's a nice little boost of, of, of extra critical chance. You're getting almost 20, what, 25% extra. That's, that's a lot. That's, you know, that takes you from, you know, 125 to 150, which is sitting at a, at a really good place there. Um, so just under S tier, decent one to have and usable on any kind of build. Let's talk about a few others here that are in the honorable mentions. Anchored is a good one, but I'm back and forth on using it. I don't build most of my ships with damage reduction in mind. I have enough high-end gear to where most things I can kill fast enough to where I don't, th that is my damage reductions, reducing the amount of damage that's actually being fired at me. Um, but even with that said, anchored, when you're not moving, it starts to stack up a really nice bonus damage up to 20% cat two. The problem is, is it starts to reduce your resistance ratings and your resistance rating really makes a big difference. So for me on, on this particular ship, if I were to run that and I was stationary, which on this build, I don't get too stationary, but if you're on a cannon build, you would want to. Sometimes you'll see people in TFOs where they're kind of backing up and going forward, backing up and going forward. That's because they're probably starting to take a little too much heat and they're running this trait. And so they need to get their ship moving a little bit to recover that resistance rating. So 
these are sitting pretty high at around the you know 30 40 percent i didn't build towards it but on this budget build and we'll go into this in the video I, I needed to have a little bit more because it's fire at will and that attracts a lot of attention but if i were to use anchored i'd lose 20 percent of this at this kind of rating here you're pretty safe even in advanced content if you're running missions you know and you're getting up to that level 50 level 60 range running missions um, you're finding the game's getting a little bit harder if you're brand new and your resistance ratings are going to make a difference on that so running something like anchored um, is it's good but you really got to know how to use it and how to unproc it when you need to um, you can get a lot of damage out of it but it also does make you pretty vulnerable and so it did not make the s tier list uh, next is context is for kings um, for me this one it, again it, it's a it's a nice one it works on pretty much everything um, but it doesn't have the same kind of impact that we have on the ones that we labeled in the S tier that we went over here in the beginning. Um, so if you take damage in the past second, plus three damage resistance rating, which is nice. Uh, if you do not take damage in the past second, plus 1% bonus, all damage for 10 seconds. Um, and, and this does stack up. The problem is, is that if you're doing a lot of damage, you're going to take damage, right? So this really ends up working well for stacking up a little bit of extra resistance. The issue is once you get to you know, 30, 40%, there's, there's diminishing returns on resistance. And so you just don't get as much out of it. And, and so for me, this is a good filler one. It's good all around. You can use it on everything, but uh, it does not make the S tier list. The next one I wanted to go over is uh, Duelist's Fervor, and this is a nice one here. So whenever you or your team kills something, you get a plus 5% all damage for 10 seconds and accuracy. Um, this can stack up to three times. So this is a 15% cat one boost. It's not real big, but you know if you already had it and you didn't have some of these other ones, I would definitely slot this. Like on my free to play, if I had this, I would definitely slot it. It's not a massive boost. It's not gonna make or break a build but it is a nice little extra boost that you get whether you're killing something or your teammates are killing something. Um, and it'll refresh every time you kill something after that. So you can continually, especially in like a TFO that has this consistent combat happening, this will be up the whole time. Now, if you're running you know, missions and things like that during the cutscenes and, and that kind of thing, or you're traversing the map somewhere, you're gonna lose this buff, but you'll start to get it back. So you do have to kind of build it up and the boost isn't huge, but it's nice. And again, you have a lot of slots here. So, you know, being able to fill this slot that's going to give you just a base boost like that of 15% is uh, is nice to have. But because it's not a cat 2 bonus, if it was, it would be in the S tier. And because you have to build it up a little bit, it does not make the S tier list. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything else here. There are a lot of other really good traits. Um, a lot of them get a little more specific for particular builds. But I, this, this video would be much longer than it already is at 20 something minutes, which um, I, was, I was shooting for like 10. Uh, you guys know how I am though. So, so I think that'll cover it. I'll, um, I'll put together some more videos. Let me know if you guys are interested in, in these types of videos where we kind of drill down into some of the very kind of nitty gritty of it. And I'll put together some more videos for S tier for science builds, torpedo builds, tanking. Uh, there's a whole variety of things that you know I would mix into this for those different types of builds. And uh, I'd be more than happy to put those together if, uh, if you guys would like that. So let me know down in the comments. Let me know what traits you're running, which ones you really like. And um, if you're not a part of the Discord, jump into that. If this video was uh, helpful, hit the thumbs up, hit the sub button. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.